Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon, everybody. Today, we're gonna have some fun. Today, we're gonna unbox all there is for Mansions of Madness. As I said in the intro, we are going to cover all of the expansions for Mansions of Madness today, starting with Beyond the Threshold. This was the first expansion, and this is what I guess they would consider a small box expansion. This actually appears to be, um, looks very similar to the uh, kind of saga expansions for Arkham Horror the Living Card Game. Uh, because it's not really a box that is, it looks meant to be reused. Uh, it doesn't have the standard lid on it. They don't really do this much anymore, and I know they have boxes this size, so I'm not really sure why they went this route. But this and Sanctum of Twilight are both these um, smaller, uh, kind of less reusable boxes. So hopefully, at the end of all this, I will be taking all of the expansions and fitting them at least into the three bigger boxes, if not reducing them all down into just two of the expansion boxes. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything here. This is not gonna be a super in-depth unboxing. Uh, most of these products have been out for years now. Um, so this is nothing new for most people, but I just thought it was fun because I had all of them still in shrink sitting around. Yeah, you can see that they're, no way this was meant to be reused here so we're just going to throw all these boxes off to the side and let's take a look at what's in this expansion all right so beyond the threshold is an expansion for mansion mansions of madness second edition where forbidden knowledge is as tempting to gain as it is dangerous to explore um add key tokens blah 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 not a whole lot here moving tiles and the key token okay and that's all it really adds along with a few miniatures we will take a closer look at these here in just a second uh doesn't look like any heroes just bad guys um here are the bases that i hate so we are gonna be getting rid of those rather quickly and oh i take it back we have one maybe two heroes here okay so we have Akachi Onyeli and Wilson Richards they are the two heroes in the box we'll take a look at their miniatures here in just a second we have some cards here which look like various items usually these that uh, have this back you gain specifically you don't randomly um, just get to get them mesmerized. That's a state. Yep, that has some text on the back. Insane. Arcane Insight. That's a new one. And Poison Mist. Alright, and then let's take a quick look at what some of the tiles look like. So we have a library, we have Yard 1, several thralls, maybe that is the only bad guy in the game here. On the back side, those spots become Attic Storage and Hall Stairs, and yep, fire, fire put out, let's see, Kitchen Storage, here are several wonder who these people are. I wonder if these are like companions you might have to escort. The dining room. And we've got the hall corner and the bedroom storage. Um, so yeah. I don't recognize any of these names. So I don't think these are like characters. I don't think they did like Imperial Assault where they throw a bunch of characters in there that you can go out and buy the expansion. It's just the miniature and some cards. 
or otherwise in the base game will just give you a token. But here we have basement storage and yard two. Um, balcony and entry hall. So that's it. Uh, let's take a look at some of the miniatures real quick and then we'll move on to the next one. Here we have Wilson Richards, the handyman, along with Akicha Anjeli, the shaman. And then there are four of these Thrall miniatures. This will easily be the only time you see me use these black stands. Ladies and gentlemen, simply there's really no other way for me to get these things to stand up otherwise. Um, but there you have it. All right, up next we have Streets of Arkham. So this was the first big box expansion that was released for Mansions of Madness. Um, there's a lot more content in this box and this seems to be the way they are going now currently. So Streets of Arkham takes you from outside the mansion and puts you out on the mean streets of Arkham. Typical Fantasy Flight catalog. We don't need to see that. Here is more of the expansion overview. I'm not gonna go into that in a lot of detail. Let's just open this up and see the tower puzzle improvements various game effects cause investigators to gain improvements effects that cause investigators to gain improvements use the word improve okay and elixirs all right and that's pretty much it let's take a look at what is inside so we've got our tiles here so we'll take a look at those in a second. See, there's just so much space here. There is a lot of miniatures under here, but there's a lot of room in this box, I feel like. And here's a whole bunch more of these tiles that we don't need to store. A whole bunch of cards and some investigators, and that's it. So let's take a look at who we get in this box. All right, Diana Stanley, the Redeemed Cultist. Finn Edwards, the Bootlegger. Marie Lambeau, the Entertainer. And Tommy Muldoon, the Rookie Cop. We know Tommy from several other games. All right, so there's the Investigators. Let's just take a quick look at some of the cards here before we dig into the tiles. All right, Enhancing Serum, improve strength, then discard this card. Mutation Juice, improve agility, then discard. Okay, that's interesting. So I wonder if improvements are permanent. Flask, improve, snub nose, revolver, gambler's dice, once per round you may convert a clue to a blank on the dice. Okay, Righteous, look at that. Is that a state you can be in? Once per round, you may convert a thing to a thing. When you suffer one or more horror, discard this card. Interesting. More insane. Exhaustion. Thirst for justice. These are new. I've never seen these before. Fog of pain. Regression. Um, Becky. Bone pipes. And so then a whole bunch more equipment. Implant suggestion. Interesting. And Azure Flame. Okay, so that's just a brief look at some of the cards that come in the Streets of Arkham expansion. Let's take a look at the cardboard. So here we have the bandstand, yard two, the alleyway, the Ligor and a skeleton, just a straight skeleton. Nothing fancy about him, no fancy mythos name. The lab, which is quite large. The exhibit one with a bear, that's cool. Lots of fire tokens. Let's see what else we got in here. Classroom, classroom, shop storage, general shop, another skeleton, more of these.
tokens. Uh, I think it's been, I think Halloween was the last time I played Mansions of Madness, so I obviously have some uh, catching up to do here with all this expansion content. I played through everything there was uh, that you could play with just the base content. Um, I picked up Mansions of Madness after falling in love with Star Wars Imperial Assault and Descent. Uh, just really liking the app driven kind of dungeon crawl aspect and really liked how Mansions of Madness was less about um, just going after every enemy, you know, enemy spawn and then you go and kill them. Or even for the most part, a lot of times you're just running away. Uh, so it had a different feel to it. And I bought the base game, played everything there was for the base game, and then slowly started picking up the expansions and just never got around back to playing them until recently when I picked up the Path of the Serpent because it was on sale um, and realized, hey, I still have all the expansions in Shrink. So why not just do one giant unboxing? So that is where we are today. Look at this one. This is easily the biggest room tile I have. The chapel is really cool. I don't know if you can see this lighting effect of the stained glass, the light coming through the stained glass window, but that is just really nice artwork. I think the artwork continues to get bigger. Exhibit entrance with the huge dinosaur, stegosaurus looks like. All right, so that is all of the tiles for uh, Streets of Arkham. Let's take a look at the miniatures and then we will move on to Sanctum of Twilight. All right, first up we have Diana Stanley, the redeemed cultist. Then we have Finn Edwards, the bootlegger here. Marie Lambeau, the entertainer. And the rookie cop, Tommy Muldoon. For the minions, we have the skeletons, which I find quite humorous that in the picture there, the skeleton doesn't have any clothes. Uh, but in his figurine, they decided to, to give him uh, a trench coat and some pants and boots and everything else. You also have yourselves uh, some hired guns. <clears throat> then you have these rather large things, which are called Star Vipers. They easily could sit on their own. I don't know why. Here's their little card. I don't know why they are given pegs on the bottoms, there you can see them, um, just to simply put them on a base. I don't know. And then there's this thing, the Lagore, which is represented by this massive, uh, well, not quite massive, but uh, so big that he really doesn't fit on my stand with the other guys, but this giant guy right here. Um, there's one of these. So that is everything for Streets of Arkham. Let's take a look at Sanctum of Twilight. All right, here is Sanctum of Twilight. This was, and hopefully will be, the last of these kind of small box expansions um, for any of their games. I'm just, I'm not a fan of how these boxes do not appear to, to be reusable. They're much thinner than, you know, your, the, the other boxes, the only thing holding them together is basically this additional cardboard inside. Alright, so again, a one pager here, um, which the wealthy and upstanding members of Silver Twilight Lodge wield forbidden arcane powers. Okay, uh, we've got some moving tiles, overlapping tiles, that's interesting, and restraint. Okay. Here is, there wasn't a catalog in that first one, which is interesting, not that I need them. Uh, again, more of these black stands we don't need. Uh, just a few miniatures, looks like two heroes again. So let's take a look at them. 
we have Lily Chen, the martial artist, and Charlie Kane, the politician. He definitely looks like a politician. He looks like a lot of people that I could compare him to, but I'm just going to leave it at that. All righty. Let's take a look at a few of the cards here. Not nearly as many. Binding power. Place a restraint in a space within range, then discard this card. Okay. Painkillers. Riot Whistle. Silver Twilight Dagger. Okay. Stress. That's a new one. More insane. And then there's these things again, which I'm not really sure what they are. Binding. Place a restraint in a space within range. Then flip this card. Uh, Spectral Razor. And Twilight Datum. Membership Ring. Okay. All right, so there's just a look at some of the cards. Now, what I would love to hear from you guys, if you are sitting here watching this, especially those of you who, I don't really know why you would be watching it, if you have all this content and already know what's in the unboxings, but maybe you're just like the nostalgia of viewing all this stuff again. Um, but I would like to know from anybody who has played through all of this content, should I go through and set up the app each time as if I only have one expansion? Or should I just go in and tell the app, I own everything there is for mansions. Now play this scenario. I'm thinking the latter. I don't know why I wouldn't do it that way, but just curious. All right, so here we have a whole bunch of those restraint tokens. Inner Sanctum, Ceremony Room. So again, this one's all back in a, we're back in a house. Particularly, we have uh, we went outside for Streets of Arkham. Actually, it looked like we went into a museum mostly, but we are back indoors again. The vault, vault office, the lounge. Here are a whole bunch more people. Parade float. Now that's cool. That's a cool graphic. So is the storage room with the coats. See, I feel like their artwork uh, is getting better each with each new expansion and the wraiths that must be the lone enemy we get in these small box expansions. All right, so let's take a look at these miniatures and then we will move on to horrific journeys. Sanctum of Twilight definitely appears to have the scantest offering of miniatures. So if that's what you're after, uh, I would definitely look to pick up this one last. There's actually only four miniatures uh, in this entire small box expansion. Um, so here is Lily Chen, the martial artist. And then there's just two of these wraiths that look like they're running a race or something, but only two of them, so only four total miniatures in this entire expansion. Uh, a little scant, in my opinion. All right, so here we have Horrific Journeys. Horrific Journeys, I think uh, they really took a step forward in opening up what uh, Mansions of Madness can do and the stories they can tell. They definitely, you know, not only did they step out onto the streets, but they took it way beyond um, onto trains, planes, and boats. So... Um, I think Horrific Journey's got a lot of nice praise keeping Mansions of Madness relevant even after it had been out for several years. So what do we have here? We have agendas, we have rift tokens, we have water. Water is a feature that slows down investigators and monsters. Whenever an investigator or monster moves into a space containing water, that investigator or monster immediately forfeits any remaining movement. The line puzzle and moving tiles. I also think some of the fan favorite investigators can also be found in this expansion. So we are certainly going to take a look at some of these tiles because they are some of the best in my opinion. Um, big old fat miniature in here. We're going to take a look at him in just a second. I now have an insanely stupid large collection of those horrible black bases. Is there more miniatures under here? No. Interesting. 
there's really not that many miniatures in this expansion, which is a little disappointing. But still, four new uh, investigators. Silas Marsh, the sailor, he is a fan favorite now. Trish Scarborough, the spy. Jim Culver, the musician, another fan favorite. And Agnes Baker, she is my favorite to play in uh, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. Um, the Waitress. So, some nice crossover there. We'll take a look at their miniatures here in a second. Let's take a look at some of the cards. Alright, so this is the agenda. Human. You are human. You win or lose the game as normal. Alright. Do one of these say non-human? Ooh, deep one hybrid. Okay. You you are a deep one hybrid. You do not win the game as normal. Instead, you win if the investigator has been sabotaged. You and any other deep one hybrids must reach the lifeboat alongside the humans. If too many survivors make it to the lifeboat with you, you will be overpowered. You ignore the effects on the back of insane conditions. So that's interesting. I wonder, for someone who plays mostly solo, will I even be able to make use of those cards? I'm not a huge fan of the whole trader mechanic. Um, I think just because I play so much solo. Um, and when I'm playing a cooperative game, I just want it to be cooperative. So uh, here's just a super quick look. I apologize, I'm not reading out the titles, but Lost in Time and Space, that is a name of the Mythos pack for Arkham Horror Living Card Game. So you can see how these are all connected, all of the Arkham Horror universe as far as Fantasy Flight is concerned is well connected all right that's a brief look at the cards let's take a look at some of these tiles which i think are going to be some of the best i hope so because otherwise i'm going to be a little I've heard so many good things about horrific journeys So this must be a boat station platform, or maybe it's a train. I'm not really sure. Dimensional Shambler. There's the rift tokens. Viewing room. Okay. Engine room. So that must... Oh yeah, that is the boat. The deck. Engine stairs. Yeah, if it's stairs, it must be the boat. But the deck is cool. The ship's deck. Alright. What do we have here? Another viewing room. And this is definitely a train car here. Uh, caboose deck, so here we have more trains. I'm wondering if the trains are all gonna be this shape here, rectangular warlock. And here is lots of boat. Lots and lots of boat. So you can see that there's a line like this kind of traveling. It's very discreet. They make it look like part of the pole. But I'm wondering if you can actually go into the water or the edge or whether the prow of the boat is like a, a boundary out of bounds. All right, and here we have, again, more freight cars, dining car, kitchen car, hunting deep one, dining room. So all the big ones are the boats. I've yet to see anything that I would think would be on the plane. Swimming pool. Is that in the boat or is that in a hotel? It's certainly not going to be on a plane or a train. But more ship deck, lots of ship deck. This must be a very big car. Here is lots of trains. Sleeper car, passenger car, lounge car, passenger car number two. And on the back side we have more stuff that doesn't make sense. A spa, the bridge, the bridge stairs. So that must be boat, boat, cabin, boat. So this is all boat on the inside. And observation car, the tracks for the train, good, dining car, train, train, baggage car, some more train. Um, all right, chart room, medical office, 
crew bedrooms and the lifeboat. So nothing really that would suggest anybody is on a plane. So maybe I was incorrect about um, horrific journeys taking place on a train. It appears to just be a boat and a train. So, and a whole bunch of these water tokens, which can be added in. All right, so that is all of the map tiles and cardboard for the game. Let's take a look at this scant miniature offering, and then we'll move on to our final box, the Path of the Serpent. Okay, for Horrific Journeys, we have Silas Marsh, the Sailor. We have Trish Scarborough, the Spy. Jim Culver, the musician. And last but not least, Agnes Baker, the waitress. Now, for our minions, we have some very interesting choices here. First, I give you the Warlock, who I feel like they definitely could have given him a better pose. He looks like um, he is going to be starring in a black and white movie, and he's going to be tap dancing soon. That's what he looks like to me. I um, feel like they, they missed out on matching the dynamic pose from his little card there. Then we have this guy, the Dimensional Shambler who honestly looks like he is dancing around. He looks like an overweight goblin that's dancing badly right now, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but that's just what he looks to me. Then we have the hunting deep one here. This guy definitely does look menacing. And then last but not least, we have the formless spawn here, which is going to come in another one of these giant miniatures, which look that that definitely looks like a hand. That definitely looks like a hoof. That definitely some eyeballs up in here, some teeth, some succubus mouth. So definitely um, a very big, ugly miniature. It's too big for my little stand. So that is Horrific Journeys. Let's take a look at the final box, uh, Path of the Serpent. All right, here is the final box we will be taking a look at today. I know you all are sad, but that's, that's okay. There will be more unboxings to come. There will be more Mansions of Madness content on the channel. So this is Path of the Serpent. This was released, I believe, just late 2019. I don't think it was in 2020. Um, I think it did come out just before the pandemic, but this is certainly the most recent uh, expansion for Mansions of Madness. It is a big box expansion. Um, I believe that, and it has this awesome uh, basilisk miniature, which you need to assemble. Um, additional rules, overgrowth, rubble, the ring puzzle. So what I think they're doing with this one is that you're kind of, you're going out of the house and being sucked into this kind of um, otherworldly jungle, almost like you're, you know, you're crossing realms or something like that. So definitely a new twist. Um, so we'll take a look at that. Here is some of the miniatures, but I don't think this is the giant snake. More black scans. Some hero boards, some cards. Uh, nothing on this side. I'm hoping there's a giant snake under here. A Surrey Bob. And not to be disappointed, there is a giant snake in this bag that we're going to have to put together. So we're certainly going to take a look at him here in a second. Let's take a quick look at the hero boards. We've got Leo Anderson, the expedition leader, Ursula Downs, the explorer, Daniela Reyes, the mechanic, 
Definitely seen her before. And Norman Withers, the astronomer. Definitely seen him before. All right. <coughs> the Disc of Its Mana. I know I've seen that before. In one of the other Arkham games, Anti-Venom, Expedition Log, Head Shears, Jeweled Skull, Lucky Bandana. All right, I'm not going to go through all of these. I just kind of want to see what else is here. Poisoned. That's, I believe that's a new status effect. Fearless. Effects cannot cause you to suffer horror unless you choose to. At the end of your turn, discard this. So you're only fearless for a turn. More insane. Infected wounds. Minor shock. Call the storm. I've definitely seen that artwork before. Banishment. That's kind of creepy. And summoning. And then Citrine, Snake, Jade, Crocodile, Obsidian, Jaguar, Turquoise, Eagle, and Mysterious Servant. Okay. Lots of Indiana Jones-esque stuff there. So that's the cards. Let's take a look at some of the map tiles here. Actually, we're going to take a look at all the map tiles here. called the pool chamber. I don't know about you, but I am not going swimming in that. Uh, chambers, chambers, lots of chambers, lots of stone and nature. We are no longer in Kansas, ladies and gentlemen. A river. More chambers, the bed chamber, the cracked chamber, the burial chamber. Ooh, over here we have Temple Stairs, Jungle Ruins, Overgrown Path. Okay. Ooh, this one's nice. The Mosaic Chamber, the Ruined Chamber, the Hall Chamber. Everything is a chamber. Oh, I like the bridge. Got some decent artwork there. Shrine. Okay. Hit. That one's okay. The the depth perception is not as good as on the bridge one, but storage chamber, we're back to the chambers. Verdant chamber, we're just going to call this the pit chamber, by the way, in case I come across that in the game. The pit chamber, the abandoned hut, the clearing, jungle ruins, clearing. Haha, <laughs> more chambers. The statue chamber. The sunlit chamber. The tunnel chamber. Dead tree. Interesting. Those look like doors into the dead tree. Ruined hut. Ravine. And last but not least, you guessed it, some more chambers. The throne chamber. The hall chamber. And on the back side, the river edge chamber and the campsite chamber. All right, that is all of the cardboard in the game. Let's finish up with a look at the miniatures and that giant snake. All right, for Path of the Serpent, we have Leo Anderson, the expedition leader. Then we have Ursula Downs, the Explorer. Then we have Daniela Reyes, the Mechanic. I love how she's got a wrench in her hand. Like that's her weapon of choice. And last but not least, Norman Withers, the Astronomer. All right, and I will have to give the nod to miniatures to this expansion. If you are looking for some of the coolest miniatures in the game or some really cool miniatures that you could use in other games that are far more unique than anything else I've seen, definitely go with these, and you will see why in just a second here. First of all, we have the Serpent person here 
Uh, I definitely feel like they could have done better with the name on that one, but such is life. That is the serpent person. Then we have the feathered serpent. So it's all about the snakes in this one, obviously. It's called Path of the Serpent for a reason, but you can see this one's going to be pretty fun to paint up there and should probably stand on his own once I take that stupid peg out the bottom of him. But the best ones of all are the ancient basilisk and the temple guardians. What I thought was one giant snake miniature turned out to be a pretty large snake miniature and then these two stone uh, guardian snakes which are pretty cool um, but this snake is definitely menacing I'm definitely getting some basilisk from Harry Potter vibes with this massive beast here uh, there's no way once he gets assembled and painted that he's going back in a box I think he's just too big but there you have it ladies and gentlemen that is all of the expansion content for Mansions of Madness. That is everything Fantasy Flight makes up to this point. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Again, it was just for fun because I had it all still in drink. All right, before we close out the video, I just wanted to show how I did end up very easily fitting all of the expansion content into two of the larger expansion boxes. And there's actually um, broom that another expansion could easily be fit into one of these boxes. But also, um, there is even some room probably that you could probably shrink everything down into one expansion box. I need to look at it further, but I just wanted to show off my Mansions of Madness storage solution has not changed. Um, this, um, you know, it was featured long ago on my channel, um, but essentially on the bottom is, a, you know, a standard box like this holding all the miniatures. Then there is uh, a token tray hidden under this side right here that is kind of long and skinny, fits real well. And then all of the tiles fit real nice up here and all of the cards fit in here. I did go ahead and put all of the expansion cards, so basically all of the mini cards, which other than these investigator cards uh, is all there is in the game, all of them fit into this broken token um, mini card holder, which is really nice. But other than the cards, the only thing in this main box is the stuff from the base game. So let's push that off to the side and let's just take a look here at what I did. One of the really nice things about Mansions of Madness is that all of the tiles are either this uh, rectangular shape or this square shape except for one from uh, Streets of Arkham which is huge but it easily just fit on the bottom. So all I have here is all of the um, rectangular tiles stacked up. This box contains all of the content from Horrific Journeys and Path of the Serpent. All of the square tiles were sitting on top of this and this box you can see contains all of the miniatures as well as all of the tokens from those two expansions. So if I open this up here, um, you know essentially what I have done is um, taken all the individual um, little tokens for each of the monsters and place them in with the monsters. Now, take in mind that the storage solution is taking into account that I don't store those black trays. I'm going to eventually paint these up and rebase them onto clear uh, lit go bases. So that's why they're just in there and you don't see any of those black bases in any of my, my storage here uh, because I don't use them, I hate them. Um, but then all of the water, all of the rubble, all of the other tokens are easily spread throughout here. And I could easily say, like, combine these three into one. Um, these are found in the base game, so I can move those into the base game content. And I also have the large miniatures, even the big snake guy here fits into the box. Now, if you painted these up real nice, you may not just want to dump them in there. I may end up displaying the snake on... Uh, a shelf somewhere because he is such a, a, a cool looking miniature. But um, as you can see in my base game here, I have the two, um, I forget what these things are called, star spawns or something like that, the big Cthulhu guys. They sit in there and, you know, I store the boxes just like that. I don't tip them on their sides and they don't get messed up. So that is uh, basically it. This other box is going to look um, almost identical here. And so this contains 
uh, Streets of Arkham along with the two smaller box expansions. And if you look inside this box, way underneath there is the, way underneath here is the ginormous map tile that came in Streets of Arkham. Um, but this box here has so much room, partly because Streets of Arkham really just had these very large uh, miniatures in it, which can all be stored away. Um, they kind of fit funky in here. Again, I may pull this guy out and post him on the shelf as well. But if you rearrange everybody, they all fit in there um, with the box closing on its own. Um, but again, you can see that barely any of these, you know, I, I was like spreading these out right here, which I don't need to. Um, the only thing that really I feel like is going to be a pain are these individual face tokens here with the names on the back because there's so many of them. But I have so few uh, miniatures here that there's room for a whole nother expansion easily. Uh, as long as that expansion doesn't contain a ton, an overabundance of map tiles, then I'm good. Um, and so what I'm trying to see is if I can take all of this content here and reduce it down and get it into that main box and then I'm essentially living um, at that point I'll probably have to store some of these larger miniatures up on a shelf somewhere but I may end up doing that anyways once they're painted so anyways uh, that is how I have gone about storing all of Mansions and Madness into just three boxes um, everything fits on one section of a cubic shelf so if if that's your storage solution, then you can easily fit all your Mansions and Madness content together. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, including some Mansions and Madness content, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.